In this video, we'll be solving an old actuarial exam problem, problem 3.1.5s, valuation of an income stream from payments on a loan giving a certain rate of return. What's going on here is there's a person who needs to borrow money from one bank. They start paying that money back, amortized, over time, and at a certain point, that first bank, maybe because they want to raise some cash, sells the remaining payment stream, the rights to the remaining pay payment stream, to another bank. That other bank wants to get a certain rate of return on their investment, so what should they pay? That's what the question is about. Betty borrows 19800 from Bank X. The repayment scheme as an amortized loan here is a little odd. It's not typical. She's repaying the loan by making 36 equal payments of principal at the end of each month. Usually, you make smaller payments to principal at the beginning and bigger at the end in order to keep your total payment each month level. Here we're going to make equal payments to principal and the interest that's paid on the unpaid balance each month at a nominal rate of 12% compounded monthly will go down each month because the total balance, the outstanding balance left on the loan will go down. Uh, so the payments overall do go down instead of staying level. Immediately after the 16th payment, Bank X sells the rights to future payments to Bank Y. But Bank Y wants to get a certain yield, a rate of return. They want to yield a nominal rate of 14%. There's a little wrinkle, compounded semi-annually. What price does Bank X receive? Or another way to say that is what price does Bank Y pay? So our timeline here is going to consist of months. Might be good to put, say, the, uh, the 15th, 16th, and 17th months here. We go for 36 months, that's three years. Let's separate the total payments into the principal reduction component, PR, the interest component, and I guess I'll put the total up here. Every month, the principal reduction is the same because these are equal payments to principal. And it's easy to figure out what that number should be. Just take the total loan amount, 19,800, and divide by 36. 550 is what the principal reduction is every single month. That stays the same. It's the interest that's paid each month that will go down therefore also making the total payment go down. It's 12% compounded monthly, so that's 1% per month. The initial loan amount is 19,800. 1% of that is 198. So the first interest payment is 198. Making the total payment for that first month 748. So then the loan goes down from 19,800. The balance goes down to 19,250. 1% of that is 192.5, and the total payment for that second month is going to be 742.5. Then this goes down by another 515, 550 to 18,700. 1% of that is 187. Total payment goes down to 737, etc. You can see the interest and total payments are going down by 5.5 each month. That's because 5.5 is 1% of 550. What would uh, the interest and total payment be for these months here? Let's figure out the 15th month first. You don't have to show as much work as I'm doing here to solve the problem, but I want to just help you see what's going on here. So every month, the interest payment goes down by 5.5. The number of months from time 1 to time 15 is 14 months. 5.5 times 14 is 77. So the interest payment at the 15th month is 198 minus 77. That would be 121. And the total payment would be 671. Goes down by 5.5 again to 115.5 here and 665.5. Uh, then here it's down to 110 and 660, etc. At the 36th month, the interest payment is going to be 5.5, and the total payment will be 555.5. In the second to last one, the interest is 11, and the total is 561. You can check that. 
So what do we do now here? We'll look at the question again. We want to value the remaining payment stream just after the 16th payment, value it at time 16 for bank Y in such a way as with this payment stream, they're getting a yield of 14% compounded semi-annually. Let's convert that to a monthly um, interest that they would get. If J is the monthly interest rate, monthly interest rate return on the investment for bank Y, uh, 1 plus J to the sixth power corresponding to six months semi-annually would have to be 1.07. Take the 14% divided by 2 to get 7% per half year. 1.07 would be the growth factor per half year, so the monthly growth factor for their investment would have to be J, where J would satisfy this equation, 1 plus J to the 6th equals 1.07. So J itself is going to be 1.07 to the 1 6th minus 1. one point zero seven to the 1 6th power, 0.16 repeating. Close enough, that's about, okay, and then subtract one. J is about 0 0.01134026. Let me go ahead and store that and register zero. And that's their monthly interest rate return on their investment. And that's gonna help us decide how to value, um, you know, what should they pay for this income stream. It is helpful to think of the income stream based on both the principal reduction and the interest to think of these two income streams separately as adding up to the given income stream. Um, this one, 550, that's a, that's a level payment stream and this one is a decreasing payment stream. So I want to figure out the present values of those things based on this interest rate per month. So what I, when, what I need to figure out here then is going to be 550, A, how many payments are left here? There's 20 payments left with this monthly interest rate, 0 0.01134026. And then the other payment stream is a decreasing one with factor 5.5, 5.5 DA sub 20 with this, this monthly interest rate of 0 0.01134026. Formula for this thing is N, which is 20, minus AN, with the same interest rate, divided by I, which is the 0 0.01134026. So now let's figure out the A. And again, you should know the formula for the A's, the present values of level annuities so well that you don't even have to write it down. All right, so I want to get the, the J in there. That's in register zero. There it is. I want to add one to it to find the one plus J then take its reciprocal to find the corresponding V, the discount factor, the monthly discount factor is this. That's gotta be raised to the 20th power. I'm looking both here and here. Raise that to the 20th power, subtract it from one, and divide by that same monthly interest rate. Divide by what's in register zero. The value of the A is 17.804. 0434886. That's this thing, and it's also this thing over here. Let's go ahead and multiply that by 550. Well, I'll store it in register one. Store that in register one. <coughs> multiply it by the 550. This part becomes 9,792.39187. I might as well go in more four. I am going to round to the nearest cent, say, at the end here. With this one, uh, let's go back to what's in register one. Recall one. I need to subtract that from 20. Then divide by that thing, which is in register zero. Get this. Multiply by 5.5, and I get 
1064.88574. Add these two things together now and round. And I get a final answer of 10,857.28. And that is correct. Okay, so that is what bank Y should pay bank X right after that 16th payment that Betty makes in order for them to get this kind of return on their investment. Now, of course, bank X has to agree to that. And you know, that to them, the, uh, the outstanding balance is more than they're, they're getting paid. The outstanding balance, I believe, is 11,000 at this point. Uh, so in a sense, they're losing a little money, but they might decide to do that because maybe they need the cash. This is would be a way that Bank X could raise some cash, and they might not just do it with Betty's. They might do it with other people's, too.